Tonight, authorities ready to release Spencer Gulf bred sterile fruit flies to combat outbreaks. And a Sejuna driver allegedly blows six times over the legal blood alcohol limit. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamein begins now. Good evening. Millions of sterile fruit flies bred in the Spencer Gulf will be released into the sky over the next 10 weeks. The aerial assault aiming to combat outbreaks across the country and help protect the horticultural industry. It's an issue being hit with the government's latest weapon. Sterile insect technology flies released from low-flying fixed-wing airplanes across 11 outbreak zones in South Australia. It's so important that we get on top of fruit fly, the fruit fly outbreaks. Um, it's very important that we maintain our fruit fly freedom. The airstrike, the latest move in the fruit fly eradication program. This has certainly been done in the past, but this is by, by far the largest um, um, spreading of the, of the flies. 20 million flies will be released over the next fortnight, with flights set to occur twice a week. The primary industries minister says the male sterile fruit flies will seek out female fruit flies and stop them breeding. At this, this stage, um, with the eradications that are going ongoing at the moment, we've spent nearly $20 million uh, getting on top of this. It's something we have to do, it's something we have to protect this $1.3 billion industry. Port Augusta, home to one of the breeding facilities. So there are two breeding sites for the sterile flies. Uh, in Port Augusta we have uh, a breeding facility that breeds uh, Queensland fruit fly. With 37,500 people employed in local horticulture, the minister also says it's an industry which needs support. More information can be found on the state government's website. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Police are investigating the cause of a fire which damaged a home in Broken Hill over the weekend. Fire crews say time is crucial when containing blazes, now reminding the community they can do some simple things to help. Our reporter Lachlanita has more from the scene. It was a passerby who noticed smoke coming from this Piper Street home and raised the alarm. This is what fire crews were faced with. Smoke pouring from the roof of the home at 7am on Saturday. The call triggering an emergency response with 12 firefighters, police and paramedics rushing to the scene. Rapid actions by the firefighters in attendance uh, prevented the fire spreading through the rest of the house. We did have a working fire inside the structure. And this is the aftermath. Floorboards burnt through, melted plastic left hanging from the ceiling. Investigations into the fire are continuing, but it's not believed to be suspicious. In this case, the house was vacant and nobody was injured. We had approximately 12 firefighters working for about half an hour to contain that fire. As this latest incident shows, time is of the essence when it comes to all house fires, our time zones serving as important reminders. If you change your clock, change the batteries in your smoke alarm. Only, only working smoke alarms save lives. More than half of fatal house fires take place in homes without smoke alarms. In New South Wales, all homes must have at least one alarm Per floor level, South Australian homes must also have alarms and need to be mains powered if the property was built after 1995. If anyone has any questions in regulation to uh, home fire safety, just give us a call. We're happy to come around and have a look. The maximum penalty for not having a working smoke alarm in New South Wales is $550, but the true cost could be far worse. Police have been searching for wanted man Billy J Hayes. It's understood a warrant was issued for the 28-year-old's arrest. After he cut off his electronic monitoring bracelet, the warrant also in relation to an assault. Police say he has distinctive facial tattoos with infamous across his right eyebrow and nasty one across his right jawline. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Meanwhile at Sejuna, police say a driver recorded a blood alcohol reading six times over the legal limit. Authorities stopped the 35-year-old woman at around 1.30 Saturday morning when she allegedly recorded a whopping reading of 0.322. Police checks also revealed she has never held a licence and is due to face court at a later date. Still to come tonight, tourists flood to popular Spencer Gulf spots for the Easter long weekend. And a Port Augusta woman calls for donations to help community members in need.
Welcome back. Perfect autumn weather has capped off a busy Easter long weekend across the Spencer Gulf. Hundreds of travellers headed west over the break, booking out accommodation and filling restaurants. Just the first clencher regional business is needed. Just so positive for the region and um, such a difference <laughs> one year can make. Hundreds of visitors heading to the Air Peninsula this long weekend, soaking up the sunny weather. Everything that we've got, Caravan Park, everything is full, even, even, the, even the pub rooms. Accommodation in Port Lincoln fully booked out, with tourists spilling into neighbouring towns just to find a place to stay. Coffin Bay and Tumby Bay have always been popular destinations, but um, we've also got the little ones in, in the middle, like Cummins and you know, some of the areas that aren't on the water that normally would sort of probably not be quite as popular have become popular as well. A far cry from this time last year when regional travel was restricted. I think people have just become, you know, or discovered Port Lincoln, you know, because we've had to travel within our own state as well. The boom, however, catching some operators off guard. Unfortunately for us, we've, um, we couldn't quite keep up with our white wines, so we, we've sold out of those. So we're looking forward to releasing the um, 2021s um, probably in about five weeks. Experts say the tourism season isn't likely to end anytime soon, with school holidays just around the corner. It's going to be really busy again from Friday, Saturday this week. Really exciting and uh, such a positive, um, positive twist on a pretty tough year. Nathan Regter, Seven Spencer Golf News. Petrol heads gathered at Melrose over the Easter weekend as the Land Rover Register of South Australia put on its annual show. The free event saw participants try off-road driving, testing the abilities of both drivers and the vehicle. Spectators were able to watch on and view a display of cars, new and old. Two of Broken Hill's arterial roads are set for upgrades due to government funding. Council receiving almost $400,000 to upgrade Comstock Street at its intersections with Piper and Hebbard Streets, while $150,000 will go towards reconstruction works on Galena Street. The funds handed out as part of the Fixing Local Roads program. Crime Stoppers and New South Wales Police have launched a new campaign aiming to reduce rural theft. They say 80% of farmers have been victim of the crime. They've had to deal with drought, floods, COVID, and what they don't need to do is they don't need to be dealing with adversity around theft. People often ask, what is suspicious behaviour? It is something that just doesn't sit right. It is something that is out of place. It can even be your gut feeling. The campaign hoping to educate communities on crime prevention and encourage people to report any suspicious behaviour to Crime Stoppers. With the cold winter months fast approaching, one Port Augusta local is collecting pre-loved clothing and goods. She says the homeless deserve to be kept warm and any donations could make a big difference. It's almost that time of year again. This Port Augusta local calling on the community to help those who would otherwise go without this winter. You can't help what family you've born into and you can't help how you've been brought up and some people don't get to have you know, choices and that's just how it is. Anne-Marie Seagram has been accepting donations for the past four years, saying it's a small gesture that will make a big difference for homeless people. Instead of um, me paying for it, I got people to drop the stuff into our office and people have been incredible. With cold nights already setting in, she says it's just a taste of what we are set to expect this winter. It's starting to get cold, so, you know, during the night, so... You can't, I can't imagine what it's like sleeping out at night, but there are a lot of people that do it. All donations are taken to the Stepping Stones Day Centre, where those in need can wrap up and keep warm. We just put it out for the clients to take and they think all oh, their Christmases are coming once and it's really good and we just can't thank her enough. Anne-Marie also pushing the community to do a wardrobe clear out and consider donating any pre-loved goods to her office at Seagram's. A lot of people out there with stuff they don't need like warm coats, warm hats, gloves, shoes, um, it doesn't matter, um, anything um, is helpful. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break, a major Australian band gears up to perform at this year's Rock the Rangers. And Salt Festival releases its lineup for the jam packed event. Hello again. 
A well-known Australian rock band is set to take to the stage at this year's Rock the Rangers at Corn. Organisers say the event will be not one to miss, being the first time the ARIA-winning band has played in the region. They're the songs embedded in the minds of many Australians. In a first for the region, Eskimo Joy will hit the stage at Rock the Ranges in October. For a major Australian act to, to come to the little town of Corn is just outstanding. The ARIA winning rock band ready to tear it up at Corn. It's being described as a once in a lifetime show for the region, with the band not set to start their nationwide tour until next year. They're a massive band and we don't see those bands in this region, any part of the region very often. Band member Joel Quatermain saying he's looking forward to performing in front of a small crowd, coming off the back of a tough COVID year. It gives us a good opportunity to get out of the city, basically, to get out and play a show in front of loads of people who are also excited about seeing live music is, is pretty much what we're looking forward to. With tickets selling fast, rock enthusiasts are encouraged to head online to secure their spot at the event. We're still having a limit of a thousand tickets and by the way, because we've already put the tickets on sale and they're just going out the door. Katrina Musson at 7 Spencer Golf News. Organisers for this year's Salt Festival are finalising preparations ahead of next week's launch. The lineup now released to the public, with the action-packed week of events promising something for everyone. From delving into the wonders of the universe to a comedy cruise and even a hypnotist, it's just a taste of what's on offer at this year's Salt Festival. We're so excited and ready to get it going. More than 120 events planned for the week-long event, organisers launching the online program. There's plenty of kids shows, we've got live music, plenty of comedy, which Salt is really known for, uh, lots of workshops, a broad range of visual arts, performing arts, we've got a bit of everything. It's been a long time in between drinks with last year's festival being axed. Now shaking back to life, it promises to take you to new heights. So I'll be taking people on a pictorial tour of the solar system. So we'll look at the eight major planets. Paul Kerno returning for his third year to unravel the secrets of the cosmos while also taking the plunge to tell the story about whales as part of a new talk. It's great to be able to um, communicate science to the wider community outside of the, the city and so forth. Meanwhile, a comedy cruise around picturesque Boston Bay is set to leave you in stitches. Just be beautiful, cruising around at sunset, three comedians on a boat. Tickets are selling out fast, so the advice is to get in quick. So please come along to my talk, so I'd love to meet you and come up and say hello. The full list of events can be found on the Salt Festival website. Nathan Regter, 7 Spence Golf News. Holiday makers and locals have had the chance to uncover some of Broken Hill's secrets at the Heritage Festival over the weekend. Those preserving the history of the city recognised during the event. Shining a light on the history of Broken Hill. Historic images brought to life on a historic building. Listening to the, um, the entertainers and the show, it's, it's fantastic, it's really amazing. The four-day Heritage Festival lifting the lid on some of the city's lesser-known figures. When men do get killed or injured, there's no compensation for their families. A performance based on early union movements launching this year's event. Put on a show for them, a bit of history and get them involved, you know. The light and sound show proving popular with travellers. Because we've only got a short time, we've got to cram it in and this come up and Mark said, let's go. While in the light of day, the tales of tombstones were shared, the picnic train shooting as intriguing as ever. One believed uh, that we were at war with his country, so therefore they were at war with us. And in a city rich in history, those preserving it recognised at the John Reed Memorial Awards. The restoration of the Broken Hill pub praised, the local historical society also recognised. The Broken Hill Historical Society is almost unique in Australia in being the custodian and holder of heritage buildings. History kept alive in Australia's first heritage listed city. Lachlan Uta, 7 Spencer Golf News. So with us after the break, locals and tourists spend their public holiday at the Air and Reptile Park. 
and we'll have the weather details with Alex. Welcome back. While not as busy as expected, many tourists and locals still spent the public holiday touring Wyala's Air and Reptile Park. Staff opening the grounds to visitors all weekend, with the animals enjoying a special Easter treat. Opening the doors to another day of curious visitors. I'm really excited to see the lizards, see if they look like the lizard that I have at home. This air reptile and wildlife park owner says the visitor traffic was not as busy over the long Easter weekend as expected. We've actually been rather quiet, which is very disappointing to see. We were hoping to be a lot busier. Caring for more than 1,400 animals, staff say support from visitors is crucial to help cover everyday costs. It goes towards feeding the animals, electricity. We're trying to upgrade enclosures at the moment as well, so we're trying to put money towards that. An ongoing list of maintenance on top of the already additional impacts of COVID-19. The park just starting to recover. Probably three, four months it started to pick up slightly, which is really nice to see. So it's great to see the community starting to move again. Locals and visitors can come and see the park's latest member of the family, little baby Willow, who's only seven weeks old. We've got emus, we've got farm animals like goats, pigs, sheep. We've got camels, horses, probably got about 40 different species of birds. We've got some reptiles, lizards, snakes, monitors. And the list goes on. Staff say it's a fun day out for families, which will keep you coming back. Have you ever been to this park before? Yeah, lots of times. More information about the park's opening hours and prices can be found online. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, Ruby. I hope everyone enjoyed the Easter break. The autumn weather provided the perfect conditions for the Easter Bunny to visit. And certainly no need to get disappointed with the fine weather to continue over the next day or two, but I'll have more on that later. From 3pm today, while it's sunny and 27, Broken Hill at 30 degrees and Woodna got to a high of 33. Looking further out across the Gulf now, Port Augusta was a high of 31, Port Lincoln 22, Port Pirie and Clare were both sunny and 30 degrees, Kadena and Cleve both got to a high of 24. Port Puri sunny and 30 degrees. Cooper Pedy got to a top of 33. And Adelaide reached 24 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, low cloud over the far southeast due to onshore winds is not rain bearing. Skies are clear elsewhere under a firm high pressure system and dry winds. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. South to southeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots. Seas 1 to 1.5 metres and south to southwesterly swell 1 to 1.5 metres, increasing to 2.5 metres south of Port Neil to Port Victoria. Mainly fine conditions, Port Lincoln mostly sunny, set to top 24 degrees tomorrow. Cleve will get to a high of 26, a minimum of 11 in Woodna with a max of 34 degrees there. Well, a sunny and 27, Port Augusta 31 degrees. Kadena set to get to a high of 28. Port Pier to top 29 degrees, Clare 28 and Broken Hill sunny and 30 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, sunny again on Wednesday with temperatures mainly to be in the high 20s to low 30s. Woodna will have the region's top of 35, Whale and Adelaide both to get to a top of 28, Port Lincoln 27, Cooper Pedy to get to a max of 34. Port Pirie 31, Kadena and Broken Hill both to top 29. Sunny in Cooper Pedy, Port Augusta and Broken Hill on Thursday, partly cloudy across the rest of the region. Woodna will have the region's top of 36, Kadena and Adelaide both forecast to top 31 degrees, Whaler and Woodna both set to reach a high of 33. And partly cloudy across the Gulf on Friday with slightly milder temperatures. Cooper Pedy will have the region's top of 33, Port Augusta 32 degrees. Broken Hill is said to reach 31, Port Pirie and Whale are both 29 degrees. Port Lincoln to top 25, Kadena will get to a high of 27 degrees, a degree cooler in Adelaide with 26 degrees there. So Ruby, these weather conditions will certainly make it difficult to come out of holiday mode and that's all the weather from me for tonight it's back to you wonderful thanks for that alex and that's the local news this monday evening thanks for joining us i'll have updates later until then enjoy your evening good night